Mira, you I think you captivated the innocence of a child when living a, such a traumatic situation at home. You talk about when you were a girl, you made up magic rules and perhaps with those rules, uh, for example, if I cross my fingers or if I don't step on cracks, um, my mum will get better. And I had rules like that too. Yeah. And uh, one of mine was if if I just stay quiet the rest of the day, surely my mum will get better. I often thought that I was the one that was to blame for her behaviour. Did you ever think that as a child? My thing more was more if I could only figure out what to do I could make her better. So I took on, you know, a kind of unrealistic responsibility, which is one of the things I think I carry to this day. If I could just do something, it would fix someone's situation. You know, it it creates it creates that sort of unrealistic kind of codependency, you know, with like I, I definitely have found myself um being overly, overly helpful or overly responsible for people that really should take responsibility for themselves, you know, in the past. And I always have to watch myself because there's something in me that that's like, um, oh, I could totally take that on. I could totally take all the responsibility for that thing. It, right. so, so that's how more how, it, how I, I didn't really feel. I don't remember feeling like something was my fault. I, I think I felt that more with my grandfather because you never knew what could set him off. It could be you put the butter dish in the wrong place mm. and, and he would go ballistic. So, uh, you know, I, I would walk on eggshells with him never knowing like what the rules were that day with my mother. It was more like, I've got to, I've got to make her better. And and it's all down to me. And part of that was, I don't you know if you remember in the book, there was my grandfather had a, a sister. Toda. And Toda, who was um, from, I never understood where my family came from because some were from Bulgaria, some were from Macedonia, which is, uh, you know, in the former Yugoslavia. Some seem to be from Turkey. I have no idea. Um, I have a feeling that their origins might have been Roma, actually. That's a whole other conversation. But my grandfather's uh, sister had been a healer in her village, an herbalist, and she was very superstitious and wore garlic around her neck and put, ash, you know, a dabbed ash on every mirror because your soul could get sucked through or something like that was also very religious and as a in, uh, in terms of Russia she was a Russian or uh, she went to a Russian Orthodox Church which my grandfather went to and took me but she decided when I was five that I had the gift right and she would take me around to these sick and dying people to lay mm -hmm. hands on them for hours hours and hours and hours I think it created this belief as a child like I think she died when I was about eight so for like three eight or nine for about three or four years uh, you know when I wasn't in school she was taking me around to do to help people and it, I think it cultivated this sort of um the sense that I somehow had the power right. to to heal someone to change to change this terrible thing, you know, to transform this base metal to gold, like an alchemist. I think that really, that really screwed me up because somehow I didn't still disbelief that it was, you know, I could, I could fix my mom somehow if I just made enough, drew enough pictures for her, or if I just cooked for her, or if I, you know, did whatever she wanted, you know, it was down to me. And which is just a sad thing because obviously it, it wasn't. But there was also this thing where they took me to uh, my grandmother. I mean, my grandmother, my great aunt, and my grandfather would take me to the uh, to funerals in the Russian Orthodox Church, and they would have me kiss. They'd lift me up and put me in the coffin to kiss the corpse, and. <laughs> It was terrifying, but there was also this idea like you have the power 
to send this soul into this other realm, uh, you know, send them off to heaven or wherever they're, they're, they're going to go. And while on a certain level, I felt like I'm just a little nothing, you know, I, I'm this neglected little nothing. Of, I'm a little bug. I also, the flip side of it was that I, I had the power to change someone's life. So it, it was pretty messed up. <laughs> um, but the transformative part of that, the, the, as, as I started to get older, I remember writing, I wrote my first, wrote and illustrated my very first book when I was 14. It was about this magic bird that lived in the forest that sang and brought beauty to people's lives. And, but you had to go through all these trials and tribulations to find this bird. And I recently discovered this, this picture I drew that was one of the illustrations. And, and it says that, you know, it's his description of this bird said, she sang to the lonely she comforted the comforted the homeless and a, and a and and could awaken the love in sleeping hearts fast forward years later when i wrote my book uh the wonderling i'm working on book 2 now um about this little creature this fox one-eared fox human character who who has the gift of music but doesn't know it yet because he's so you know oppressed where he is um he hears his mother tells him before she dies, you must sing to the lonely. You, you are a wonderling. You must sing to the lonely. You must comfort the frightened and awaken the love in sleeping hearts. And that has been my motto my whole life. It has always been my motto. And so, so I think taking the essence of what my great aunt Tota believed in me, certainly I can't, I can't heal people with, laying down on my hands on the, I mean, every, just about everybody died. I mean, from I laid hands on. Um, at the same time, at the same time, it, it instilled this belief that there is something in, in us that can uplift others. You can transform someone's life. And my belief is through, I really, you know, believe that art and stories and to me, the highest art form at all of all to me is music because it crosses all boundaries it crosses all all cultures it crosses everything and and so you know that I suppose was the gift that my great aunt gave me was that yes I do have something in me that can do some good it's just not necessarily has to doesn't necessarily have to do with you know placing a a, a necklace of garlic on anyone and you know putting my hands on them and kissing them when they die it has to do with <laughs> this other thing which is you know no matter how how oppressed you are no matter how the world hurls its furniture at you and and no matter how awful your 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 situation is at, at home you, there's something in us that is with is beyond all this and that is really um full of life and full of music and full of stories and full of hope so i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> oh definitely yeah i understand I yeah understand. i'm sure you understand i've, I've heard just things so i'm sure oh, you understand thank you yeah. 